I've been studying uh, several healing modalities, and I know a lot of people here have and do do different healing modalities. And um, so here I've drawn into my life some dear friends and close people who are now experiencing cancers and um, you know losing organs and you know right in the middle of this life and death. And I was wondering. What I've been doing is is looking at them and praying with them, with them not being around me, and just seeing them in their perfection, and seeing them not as their body, and seeing them as part of the whole you know, light. Um, can you, both of you, address this kind of healing? How we can assist each other in these, you know, life and death, body. Um, thanks as well as, you know, say, well, I'm working with the Course in Miracles, maybe you might like that, too. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it, it may sound a little bit heartless, but we have to go back to that first miracle principle. You know, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. Now, I'm not saying that that's easy. Uh, the Course starts off with its most advanced principles, right at the beginning. And uh, Jesus knows that we're not up there yet. You know, we haven't climbed the entire ladder yet. And maybe it's just at the top of the ladder that you can really see that. You know, that uh, no matter how frightening, no matter how horrific, no matter how terrible it may appear to be, it's really no different than anything else. Because you can't make a distinction, once again, between that which is untrue and that which is equally untrue. Now, I think that you're actually serving people and doing good for them to think of them as, you know, whatever is going on, think of them as, well, you know, it may look that way, but you're not a body. And the only way that, uh, you know, bodies get sick is because people believe that they're guilty. You know, so it's the unconscious guilt in the mind, you know, punishing you. It's like, uh, I think it's Ken Wapnick who said, you know, it's almost like you're saying to God, no, God, you don't have to kill me, you don't have to hurt me, I'll take care of it. You know, I'll, ta I'll take care of it. You know, so, uh, you know, it's like, uh, what you need to get in touch with and what they need to get in touch with, and you can kind of like uh, join with them at the level of the mind and kind of like pass the message along. You know, you can't do somebody else's forgiveness work for them, but you can kind of like act as an example. And uh, the example could simply be, well, you know, why not choose this instead? Why not choose health? Why not choose to uh, get in touch with your own innocence and forgive the idea that you're a body? At one point, the Course says that the best thing you can do about the body is forget about it. You know, don't take it so seriously. Don't uh, think that it's you. Just kind of like, uh, you know, observe it and, you know, kind of like uh, think of yourself as being what you really are, which is this immortal spirit that is totally innocent. And the more you think about yourself that way, the more your unconscious mind will get the message that that's what you are. But uh, sooner or later, it always comes back to forgiveness. It always comes back to, you know, the idea of thinking, okay, I'm not a body, I'm free. I am still as God created him. You know, then you don't have to dwell on it. And you put in, uh, you know, the mind in the position to heal the body by thinking of yourself as being what you really are. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And I, remember, I mentioned earlier when I was going to do at the beginning of my work with the Course, I'm just doing the workbook lesson saying, okay, I mean, the one part of me, I think what I was so open and willing, I actually was saying, the Holy Spirit, sometimes people say, don't ever say that to the Holy Spirit, but I did. I said, bring it on. <laughs> and when you say, bring it on to the Holy Spirit, it's like, and be ready. <laughs> so I, you know, I mentioned about the young man with the demonic possession. That was pretty steep, I thought, for such an early start there with the Course. I actually was doing the, the workbook, and I was going through the workbook very sincerely, sincerely and diligently. And I remember one day, I was going through the workbook and Jesus said in the workbook this beautiful phrase, there is no death, the Son of God is free. And so I'm like, it was like a, a, a one line that I was just riveting on. I was just feeling like this intense joy. There is no death, the Son of God is free. Like a Rolodex kind of rolling around with the same thought. And I was just getting lifted higher and higher and it was like going into a mystical experience. And I thought, 
wow, this is going to be a great day. I mean, what a start. But that was what I was working on. It looked like a death day. So, I remember that day, um, I, I used to go back then and would, uh, on that particular day, I would take my grandmother, I would stop at a grocery store, go to get her a salad bar and, and bring her uh, a fruit salad. And I always would go to the same grocery store near her apartment. And this day, the spirit said, we're going to the same, it was the same brand name, but it was a whole different grocery store. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny. Oh, but this just, okay. So I go to that grocery store, I go in there, and what unfolded that morning, when I was going through that, there is no death, the Son of God is free, was a, was a raising the dead experience. You know, like with Lazarus, uh, I was like, I was guided to this grocery store, I walked in there, I was heading back to go back and make the fruit salad, and I saw this lady laying out on the, the tile floor, and the paramedics were there, and they were like working on this lady. And they were like doing CPR and so on and so forth, and I'm like just watching the whole thing. And I still got the, the one idea going through my mind, there is no death, the Son of God is free. It's like really rolling through my mind, it's the only thought I'm thinking. And I'm watching this scene, and then, then the paramedics leave, and the little, it was like a football huddle, the people around her left. And there was this body laying there on the on the floor of this grocery store. And I just watched it, and I was actually, back by this time, back by the frozen food, so I'm kind of leaning, now watching this scene next to the frozen foods, and there is no death, the Son of God is free. There is no death, the Son of God is free. It's still going. So I'm feeling all this energy up here, like in the third eye, and I start feeling all the energy here, and I'm watching, and I'm watching, and I'm watching, and then the diaphragm, starts to move again. The, the breath starts to move again. And I'm watching, and the breath comes back, and then the Holy Spirit's like, okay, now go get your grandmother's salad. <laughs> and I'm, so I go back, and I make the salad, and I, he says, now go to the cash register and pay for it, and get over to your grandmother's. And I did. And, and it was, the most important thing about the whole thing was everything felt so natural. Nothing seemed supernatural. Nothing seemed out of place. It was almost like predictable for doing that lesson and doing that thing. And I was watching it and I went on and it wasn't like I, I got like Bruce Almighty, you know, with the, uh, the tomato thing. Ah, you know, where <laughs> he's in there. He kind of gets egoically caught up into being God and doing these things, this was like the most natural thing in the world, like it was a natural expression, just a perception. And so what I teach people was, people say, so you, you raised the dead. And I said, no, let's get, let's not try to get into this raising the dead stuff. I mean, because what is the Course in Miracles teaching us? That death is a belief in the mind. Uh, Jesus, you know, doesn't say that death happens in form. He basically is saying, you know, there is no death, but he's talking about the ego is not real, is what he's talking about. Just like Gary was talking earlier about incarnations, that really spirit never comes into a body or leaves, and really those aren't real kind of beginnings and endings. It's all continu continuous, it's all one mind. And that's what I got that day about death. It was like, that was the experience, was as long as you believe in the ego, the ego is the death wish. That's your thanatos, like Freud called it. And in a practical sense for what you're talking about, the one thing that's coming to me now is the Holy Spirit always told me when I was doing the Course, year after year after year, I had this one line that kept coming in like a broken record from the Holy Spirit. And it was whispered to me countless times, it's your lesson. It's your lesson. In the sense that every time I start to say, why am I dealing with so many sick people in my life? Or why am I dealing with these people that keep cutting me off on the highway? Uh, or why am I dealing with this persistent symptom of my body or whatever? I would hear one thing from the Holy Spirit. It's your lesson. It's not their lesson. It's simply an opportunity to give it over to the Holy Spirit.